Is there anything more confusing than protein intake? I swear, like the very, very first thing you hear when you're trying to get fit, or even if you're just trying to lose weight and don't care that much about getting fit, the first thing you always hear is eat more protein, eat lots and lots of protein. But what does that actually mean? Because we're not talking about eating enough protein to avoid a deficiency. The USDA recommends like about 60 grams per day for that. What we're talking about is eating enough protein so you can gain muscle if you're in a bulk, preserve muscle if you're in a cut, and just gain as much strength as you possibly can. Well, this is Nick at barben.com, and if you want a really easy answer right now, I'll give one to you. Consume protein with all of your meals and have one or two protein shakes a day. That's gonna be enough for most people to like produce a measurable effect on body composition, especially for people who just don't really wanna think about it that much. If you're not into tracking your calories and measuring every gram of protein, just like have some protein with every meal, have some protein between meals, that's gonna give you some okay results, like you'll be fine. But what if you want to be more than fine? What if you want to be your best? What if you want to have the best body you possibly can? How much protein should you consume? Trust me, I found it really confusing myself, or at least I did until I did a bit of research. I spoke to the very clever Dr. Mike T. Nelson, who's going to be joining me later in this video. And it's not quite as complicated as a lot of people make it out to be. So today we're going to talk about how much protein should you eat to build muscle or maintain your muscle? How much do you consume if you're in a big, big calorie deficit? And what's the ideal amount of protein to eat at one time? So before I get into all of that though, I'm gonna address the question that's probably on everyone's mind. Isn't the answer just one gram per pound of body weight? Here's the thing with the one gram per pound of body weight rule. It's very easy to remember, it'll get you results and it won't hurt. So it's totally fine, but is it 100% necessary? Probably not. I think actually the most influential paper published on this was a position paper from the American Dietetic Association, Dietitians of Canada, and the American College of Sports Medicine, all of whom came together to release this position, to release this number of the amount of protein you should consume per day for optimal health and exercise performance. It's one number. This is it. Are you ready? Like we're giving you the answer early. It's 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight, which is about 0.54 to 0.77 grams per pound of body weight. Markedly less than that one gram per pound of body weight rule. What you really need to remember is that when it comes to gaining mass or losing mass, far and away the most important component is the amount of calories you consume. Protein is an important part of those calories, but so are the carbs and fat. And then of course there's also the micronutrients, and then there are the workouts you do and your recovery and how you sleep and stress. All these other components are gonna to come together. So don't think of a protein shake as like a one-way ticket to a Schwarzenegger body. There's a ton of other stuff you have to be mindful of. All that said, yeah, but like 0.54 to 0.77 grams per pound of body weight, that does seem to be the rule. Most people agree with it. I spoke to Dr. Mike T. Nelson about this. He's a barbend expert. He also has a PhD in exercise physiology. He's a professional member of the International Society of Sports Nutrition and a bunch of other nutrition-related fields. He's basically a walking library for this sort of stuff. And spoiler, he agrees that 0.7 grams per pound of body weight is totally fine. The general number I give people, like just based on the research, is about, if you convert it to English, uh, 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. So that's based on some chronic uh, studies. But basically, you kind of pool all those studies together, and you get about 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. Most of the other position stands that have come out will kind of match that. So the ISSN one matches that. Uh, the meta-analysis that I think Stu Phillips was maybe the main author on that. Um, and that kind of matches that too if, again, you take the average, right? So if you look at the meta-analysis and you go, okay, well, I want to be like, you know, Joe Burrow, super jacked. I'm a natural bodybuilder guy and I want to be in the 99th percentile of everyone in the study. Yeah, now you're closer to kind of a gram per pound of body weight. See, now you're worried, right? You're worried like maybe I'm in that 99th percentile or maybe I should be. So should I just get the one gram per pound of body weight rule anyway? Well, there just isn't a lot of evidence to state that that's the ideal amount of protein you should consume. But as Dr. Nelson puts it. I mean, I've told people that, you know, it's like, yeah, if you want to be, you know, especially if you're cutting, right? So especially if you're hypocaloric and even the 0.7 grams, there was some of those studies were hypocaloric also. Yeah, you can go to a gram per pound of body weight. You know, I mean, that's probably going to be fine if you want to err on being conservative and making sure you're covering the widest variety of population. I think that's fine. So if you just love eating protein, you love getting a good gram per pound of body weight per day, go ahead. Like, it's, it's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There was even one study from Jose Antonio that found that people eating 400 grams of protein in a day did not experience extra fat gain or decreased kidney function as a result. 
they just also didn't gain any more muscle than people on a lower protein diet, like lower relative to that anyway. So honestly, when it comes to this sort of stuff, if you are someone who struggles to hit one gram per pound of body weight, as honestly I am myself, you don't have to go that high. There's no way around the fact that you do need to consume the right amount of calories for weight gain or weight loss, but you don't have to make up that much of your calorie intake of protein. Okay, but what if I'm trying to lose weight as fast as humanly possible? That is of course a question that many people have asked themselves throughout the years. And look, there's pretty solid evidence that 0.7 grams per pound of body weight is still fine even when you're in a big calorie deficit. However, there is an argument to be made that if you're in a pretty dramatic weight cut, higher protein may be a better idea. There was one study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that found that when people were in a big calorie deficit, like a 40% calorie deficit, people consuming a little bit over one gram per pound of body weight, they lost more fat and retained more muscle than people consuming half that amount of protein. Now, one study is not exactly gospel, but there are a few other reasons that argue for the case of consuming higher protein when in big calorie cuts. So protein is one of the rare macronutrients you can add and it's not gonna affect fat loss. Protein or uh, carbohydrates and fat, you probably generally have to cut. So what happens in reality is I may have someone who's a 200 pound person eating 250 grams of protein a day when they're doing a pretty extensive fat loss program. Not because that extra 50 grams is going to be protective against muscle. It's just they're hungry as hell and I need to feed them something so they don't destroy, you know, Chinese buffet and over <laughs> overeat all sorts of other stuff. And protein's kind of a, I hate the word free macronutrient but it's one of the rare things you can add just like fiber someone has a little bit higher satiety they feel like they're eating more and it's not really going to negatively affect their fat loss so basically when you're on a diet that makes you super hungry it makes more sense to lean on protein than one of the other macronutrients now with discussions like this often comes this common refrain that i've heard a ton the body can't absorb that much protein, right? You can only digest like 30 grams of protein at a time and everything else you excrete out of you, right? Probably not. That 30 gram limit has a lot to do with pee. There were old studies that found that uh, when you're consuming more than 30 grams of protein at a time, more nitrogen is in the urine. So people figured that meant that you weren't absorbing the protein. The thing is like nitrogen doesn't have any calories and protein is made up of a lot more than nitrogen. There's also carbon and hydrogen and oxygen along with other elements that do still get absorbed by the body. So the 30 gram limit isn't really a discussion that's worth thinking a lot about. It's better to think about, is there a minimum amount of protein you should consume? One component of protein intake that people talk about a lot is the amino acid leucine. Amino acids are like the building blocks of protein and leucine is the one that's the most closely linked with muscle gain. That's because it's super closely linked with muscle protein synthesis, which is a process responsible for switching on genes responsible for muscle gain. Now, there are again, many other things that go on with muscle gain you need to be mindful of, like workouts, overall calorie intake, sleep, all that stuff. But still like people who are serious about this stuff, they do keep an eye on how much leucine they consume per serving. And it appears, and I'm very aware I'm getting really into the weeds here. This is like pretty like high level information, but it appears that you want about two to three grams of leucine per serving. The thing with that is different proteins have different amounts of leucine. So when it comes to something like whey protein, you are going to want to get about like 20 to 25 grams of whey protein per serving. That'll hit that whey, that leucine threshold. When it comes to soy protein, threshold's like a little bit high. You want about 30 grams to get that amount of leucine. And when you're talking about like say nut protein, you need like a lot more. You need like 800 calories of nuts to hit that leucine threshold. So it is like very different. And if you're listening to me talk about all this and you're thinking I'm just really overcomplicating things, there's a good chance I am. Like there are some studies that have found whether you're taking whey or soy over a long period of time, there's not really that much of a difference as far as muscle gain goes. But nonetheless, if you are someone who really keeps an eye on these sorts of things, you wanna make sure you get two to three grams of leucine per serving. Finally, I wanna quickly answer a question that you often hear in these sorts of discussions. Isn't all this protein bad for your kidneys? No. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> this has been researched a ton because of course it's important to know given how many people are told to consume high protein diets and how many people are on high protein diets, it's very much in the public interest to figure out if a high protein diet is bad for the kidneys. There just hasn't really been that much evidence to suggest as much. It does give the kidneys more work to do, 
But like there was one study uh, on resistance trained men who consumed 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which is a ton. This was over a year. They found no impaired kidney function, no impaired liver function. There was another one on bodybuilders consuming 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Kidneys were totally fine. I do need to make a couple of things super clear though. Number one, I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. Speak to your physician if you have concerns about this. Number two, the key word here is healthy kidneys are not impaired by a high protein intake. However, people with like kidney disease or impaired kidneys in some respect, they are often advised to follow a lower protein diet because again, it does give the kidneys more work to do. So if you have any concerns whatsoever, please do me a favor, speak with your physician. All right, that's everything from me on how much protein you should consume every day. Remember, there is a big difference between how much you need to avoid a deficiency and how much you need to look and function at your best. Pretty much everyone reputable and pretty much all the big studies agree, 0.7 grams per pound of body weight, totally fine. If you like having more, go ahead. It doesn't seem to be any negative effects associated with that. I really want to thank Dr. Mike T. Nelson for coming on today. And if you want to read the full article that I wrote to go with this video, where I get a bit more nitty gritty with the studies, and you can read out all the research I've done myself, just make sure you Google Barbend, how much protein.